a crucial topic history of international law so in this video we'll be learning quite a number of stories so actually it's a series of stories uh, just to find out exactly how uh, the international law came into being you know you might be you know rather surprised to find out that even 3000 years ago we used to make contracts and this is one of them we call them the Kadesh Treaty now take a look at the map please uh, here you can see the Egyptian Empire funny the Egyptian Empire for all that might and gla glamour and grandeur and all that grandeur and all that it was such a small empire not a big empire Egyptians were not you know interested in capturing countries but then they had a problem with the city in Kadesh can you see up there between the red border and the green there was a Hittite Empire the modern day Turkey and then the most powerful Egyptian Emperor at the time right Ramses the second he fought a war there to capture the city of Kadesh and uh, you know the war ended in nobody winning actually Kadesh could not be captured by uh, Ramses the second but uh, this you know he was able to defeat the Hittite army though of the Empire thereafter they made a contract a treaty they call it the eternal treaty because they never broke the contract thereafter what is the deal yes you know they agreed you know to work together never to hit the, the other country never to attack the other empire and that was mind you you know 1258 BCE means uh, look at the 2100 years 2120 now it's more than 3000 years ago and what the aftermath of this was to the benefit of both the empires Egyptians for all their abilities are not exactly technologically advanced with the use of metals and all and Hittites were so they were able to get their knowledge from the Hittite Empire and the Hittites though they had the technological prowess they were poor at uh, agriculture and which something that Egyptians are far ahead of the Hittites so they shared it right went on world's first known international treaty Kadesh treaty result here you can see long lasting peace Another one, the Greece and the Romans, you know, both, right, the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire, you know, they lasted very long time and both the empires consisted of so many other nations, nationalities, different types of people living together. Greek Empire spread over so many territories, so did the Roman Empire and they created this natural law who the Greeks and the Romans came up with the Jus Gentium the law of nations by the Romans and that also is part of international law so this is a Greek Empire Alexander right uh, walked all the way to India created a massive empire and before them so, so multiple nations together but one system for many many things international between the nations Greeks had it the Romans right for all their you know the expanse right across the Mediterranean again multiple multitudes of nationalities communities regions one system they created so yeah one law so how old were these empires? Definitely more than 2,500 years ago, close to 3,000 years ago. So, uh, you know, these are the very roots of the international law. Result? This is the very purpose of international law, right? So, the Greece and the Romans had it, although we lost it later. this one is an interesting one you know this was the treaty of uh, you know the Tordesillas 
there's a mistake in the number though it should be uh, uh, 4000 uh, sorry 1000 yeah correct 1494 at that time the pope alexander cut the known world into two in order to prevent the portuguese and the spanish empires fighting each other for new territories you know much of the world was discovered by these two seafaring empires portuguese who came to sri lanka and the spanish who discovered america but in order to prevent them from clashing over territories pope got the modern world at that time and cut it into two the treaty of tordesillas so under the treaty you know a territory west of this meridian they were to be given to the portuguese and the territory east i'm sorry territory uh, east of it right was given to the portuguese and territory east was to the spanish and much of the land here so spanish got and portuguese got africa and yes asia and yes both empires on at the pact they never fought against each other they fought others but not against each other more than 7 800 years ago non interference non aggression so they were the basic fundamentals at the time mighty they were but they honored the sign that they put on the paper right with the good officers of the pope at the time another one the peace of westphalia you know there were these two very brutal wars in europe first the 8 year war and then followed by the 30 year war they were the dark ages more than 10 million people were butchered in europe 10 million it happened in the th late uh, 15th and 16th centuries um you know the destruction was enormous but then all this came to an end with one paper one document one agreement yeah they call it the treaty of westphalia and that helped yeah peace in europe again that was one of the very first uh, you know treaties where you accepted the sovereignty of the other nation independence of the other nation this was a huge step right at that time in europe there was not such a thing called the city states right take a look at the map here how many countries together and the treaty of westphalia agreed that yeah the independence of the states have to be agreed upon respected that was for the first time in the european history so it was such a big thing such an important milestone in the you know the world of uh, laws and added to that non interference and that led to the end of all that brutalities in europe now imagine 10 million people being butchered to back to back wars and ending it all in a contract that's the international law creation there were some other laws take a look at the canon law it's nothing about the carlo talk it's about the rules set by the vatican vatican of the roman catholicism played a huge role in uh, you know the development of the laws canon law is a religious laws we had a lot of it today it's less but we were run for multiple centuries you know with the contribution of the canon laws that's part and parcel of international law and then the law merchant we call it how you do the business the trading shipping import export transfer of goods transportation you know payments receiving loans all that's law merchant much of the modern uh, laws on trade were developed about uh, 1000 plus years ago 
and the maritime laws the laws related to shipping carriage of goods by the sea and all none of them are new laws they are old old laws centuries old so the funny thing is lots of international law that we are running for today that we are learning in our you know the semesters right now are created or have been created centuries ago so there's a lot in the history of you know international law because a lot of that history is being followed even today that's a reality right very little had changed with regard to our trading you know the practices and they've been there from the earliest of times like you know the duties of the seller rights of the seller implied conditions implied warranties the lot how the transfer happens they were all old old rules renaissance played a big role renaissance is you know the year rather age we are the world's especially the Europe got into or rather rediscovered art, creativity, music, you know, the culture, the beauty of human, uh, you know, um, mind. It became the students of psychology, right? Space, uh, you know, the research, astronomy, so many things, research, discovery, so many universities came. That was the period of Renaissance and that contributed heavily to international law. Two schools of law were created, one were the naturalists, other were the, others were the positivists. We'll be learning them later. So, again, history, contributing. This, another one, you know, finally the wars contributed a lot to the creation of the international law. Paris Treaty was created for the independence of USA. USA originally you know, earlier were held by the British Empire, then the Americans fought against the British and created independence for themselves. And they ended the war with the Paris Treaty. Versailles Treaty, that's how we ended the World War I. The brutal, murderous World War I ended with an agreement resulting in an international treaty between multiple nations. Yeah, creation of free nations. You know, one fundamental aspect of international law is understanding, and respecting, honoring, recognizing the sovereignty of a nation. That is one fundamental of international law. And it was created in the history, recognizing the independence, the borders of a nation. That's the very basic of international law. That was created thanks to this historical event, although they were pretty brutal you know, the incidents that ended in good things. Paris Treaty, Versailles Treaty. Yeah, was followed treaties. Take a look at Sri Lanka. What about us? The D is by the Kandyan Kingdom and the Dutch International. It was a deal between the Sri Lankan government at that time, the Kandyan Kingdom. Yes, we were a separate kingdom, although country was not under one but Kandyan kingdom was the representative of it and the king of uh, the Dutch Empire Netherlands so it's an international treaty but sad one right you know it was a rather bad deal for us and uh, you know Dutch profited and we were kind of double crossed you know the story this one betraying the independence of the nation by the chieftains to the British Empire the king of England and Scotland. It is an international treaty between two nations. A copy of which you can see it in the museum. Right? So, we were not exactly very good at international treaties. Even the first international treaty was also not so good, right? You know, the Prince Vijaya and you know the Kuwaini. Yeah, two representatives of two nations. They had a treaty. He violated it. You know the broken promise, rest of the story. And then the war, crime, war crimes tribunals, first the Nuremberg, what did it bring? There was a thing called the natural justice, that means the law, it must be anywhere. Ask no question, it should be part of it, humanity, right? The 
right to the human beings, right, uh, from the basic violations or for the basic rights. Right? You cannot violate it. Even a law of a nation cannot violate the basic uh, human dignities. That was Nuremberg and later Rwanda. Yugoslavia, this war crimes tribunals also contributed a lot in the creation of uh, modern concepts of some of the international laws. Yeah. This is the most <coughs> visible uh, example of international law being enforced. International Criminal Court. Sri Lanka is not a signatory. So many other countries are not, but there are a lot of countries which have already signed for the International Criminal Court. So there, what happens? In those signatory nations, not everybody has signed it, mind you. Only some countries have signed it. Many countries have decided not to. Obvious reasons, right? If it's war crimes, crimes against humanity or genocide, we'll be discussing them later, right? International Criminal Court can punish them up to life imprisonment. That was the first such global court with enforcing powers. I say says that. Yeah, that is the very basic of international law. Accept the sovereignty of states. Very fundamental of this is George Soros. International law is based on this, built upon it. Okay, in the later lessons we'll be learning. And the rest of you know the unfolding aspects of international law catch you then <laughs>